uh, before we start, and I always tell you, and I make sure I tell you, number one, you are love. Okay, Angel, you are love. Number two, you are appreciated. And number three, you are what? Family. Your family. Welcome, church. Family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, we are going to go ahead and pray in. So uh, let's just get, uh, you know, let's get our hearts right, our hearts right, and let's just pray in right now. Father God, I want to praise you and thank you, Lord God Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful day today, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all the goodness, Father God. Thank you for your grace, Lord God, for the peace you give us, Father God. We ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to just open up our hearts and our minds to receive the word today, Father God, that you have ready for us, Lord. We thank you that we get to be here, Father God, and to praise you and to thank you. We pray for the worship. We pray for every person in here that's going through anxieties, Lord God. Diminish them. They'll be gone out the window, Father God, out the door. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father God, that we just have an awesome service today. Amen. Okay, the uh, altar are open if you want to come up here and pray. Amen. Give the Lord a good praise, God. Amen. Was that a good one? I heard something today that was kind of dangerous. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all their heart. Lead. Don't sin on him. Lean, to, lean not to my own understanding. The only ways of knowing him gives us a path. How many of you ever had a snotter? You know, everybody knows something? You reach for a Kleenex. What happened when you grabbed the first Kleenex out of the box? The next one popped up. So, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lead not to thy own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge Him. Whatever you ask Him for is going to pop up. In fact, here's the deal. I got to thinking about that. You know, we get so, well, I'm afraid of this, afraid of that. Once you pull the thing out, the next one's going to be there. Amen. And that's the same way with God. Once you trust Him and lead not to your own understanding, right? He's going to give you the next way to go. How to make the next decision. Amen. All right, let's give him a praise offer. I didn't give him a praise offer. Hey, man, man, man. Turn on your so many big hug, man. Come here. Glad you're here. We rationalize it, we twist it around, we acknowledge it, and figure out, well, can we do it or not? 
everything God did say to think about, He's just do it. Yes. Trust in the Lord of our life heart. Yes. Yes. Lean not to thy what? Yes. Yes. In all thy ways. And what He's going to do. Yes. 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 He's going to lead our path. He's going to accomplish what He wants to do. You know, to me, this thing is getting more and more, and more exciting each and every day. In fact, we're doing so many, many things anymore. I don't know what's. Seen a lot of neat things happen. For example, today was at Chicken Park. I don't know how many people we got a chance to pray for. It was just so neat. You see, that's what. You just grab another Kleenex. What first you got to grab one? That gets us started. <laughs> anyway, I got a Kleenex. Thank God it's not, you know. You got a messed up life. Maybe that's what you need to take for to clean up your life. <laughs> well, you know, trash bags are the same way. They're in rolls. You pull one, you know, then another, that next one pops up. So if you've got a lot of trash, maybe we better start pulling the, the trash bags and fill them up with them. <laughs> the next one will be waiting for you when you've got some more problems. Amen. This is the thing is so exciting. It's just letting the Holy Spirit, just letting God have His way, and He'll so get you past you that you can't even. Think or a man. Amen? And so, a lot, a lot of times, it's spontaneous. For me, it's spontaneous. It's just trusted, believing. Come on, Is that your name? See, this is what I mean, trusted, believing. I just pulled out a Kleenex. There's another one. I don't want to do I don't want to do that. Why did I do that? to get rid of something and just stays in your heart. What they did is they got the reeds and they had like two nails and they smashed it on his head. After they smashed it on his head, you know what they did? They took it off him and they struck him with it. Wham! Right after that, they spit on him. That's our Savior. One day when he comes, he's going to come back for us. Yes. Nobody in this whole world will ever know what he went for for three days and three nights. Nobody will ever know that. Only the Father will know He is us. And the only reason I was thinking about this, who would you be today if you didn't know Jesus half of us would probably be dead? Just by the grace, the grace, grace of God for the here today. Yes. Come give us one more chance. And can I share something? They took out three quarters of my lower intestine in 2006 for methamphetamine. The doctor gave me three operations. And then normally he comes back and a nerd comes and talks to you, but he goes, I come to talk to you personally myself. He goes, we don't cut people open when they have gangrene because they die. He goes, they die. He goes, you, you went three times and you made it? He goes, just remember this one thing. See that guy who gave you another chance to live? I started to cut him. Stop. No. You know what we do? We're wasting our days instead of being on our, in our hands and knees and our hearts before God and say, God, what do you want me to do? Just like Nike says, just do it. That's what he's talking about. Hey, man, just do it. Now. That's why I say, lean out your understanding. But the way God does things is not humanly something we can understand of ourselves. But when it's all said and done, and then we focus on him, and he kind of explains, and we can see why he did what he did, but we got to wait for him to do it. He'll pull up the Phoenix thing first, and then he'll take you to the next step. That was really good. See, the thing is, when you just trust God, it, things just happen. But when you know, you're stuck with you. I don't know if you really truly understand that. Have you ever get tired of you? Man, that's so good. So real to me. I get tired of me so many, many times. But when I just seem to get out of the way and let God be God, it's just utterly, utterly amazing. Amen. Amen. The, that's opening yesterday. Man, that was exciting. Amen. Just to see people get touched and changed. This young man reminded me of him. It was talking about how bad things are in his life. He stood up and talked and we just shut up and listened to him. Then we got a, a chance to explain to him. God's got it all under control. 
It's happening to all of us. You just keep pulling up those yeah. things. Yeah. He's going to keep working in you. It's not a matter of believing your understanding. It's trusting Him. And when you do start trusting Him, He's got all, all, all working yeah. together yeah. for the good. Yeah. And see, the only way He's going to get us past us is when we do trust Him. Amen. And sometimes He's got to rattle our case, bang us upside the head, whatever it is, to get our attention. But that's what it takes. Because He's not going to give us more than we can have. He loves us so much, He's given us exactly what we need. Yeah. 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 See, the thing is, oh God, i got to do this, i got to do that. Instead of, okay, okay, God, I don't understand this. I gotta, but, I'm going to stay focused on you. I'm not going to deal with it, though I have to deal with it. But when I have to deal with it, you know what I'm talking about, then I'm going to deal with it. I'll be willing to say, okay, God, let's sit here I am. Amen. Where are we going to go from here? And that's when he shows you. He's not going to show you two months before so you can get all prepared. It's probably like the, the 12th, well, one minute before midnight. You know what I'm talking about? 11.59, 59, 59 seconds. You got one second to go. Maybe that's when he's going to try to tell you. But that's when he will do that if that's his will and not before. Does that make any sense? Amen. I think you really start to feel revival. Amen. You can feel there's something happening. And by the way, he'll minister to you where you are. And this is what I want you to understand. If you're a baby, fine. If you're still blah blah, and that's fine. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I don't know if I can put on this one, I say it many times. Some of this little squirmy, wriggly thing comes into this world. Oh, look how beautiful it is. That's us. Well, this little scrimy little thing, you know. <laughs> Wrinkle it all up, that's what I don't get. But it's a baby. And that's born in this world. And then of course everybody, the God put it in everybody's heart how to deal with babies so they can be healthy and grow. He'll put it in our heart the same thing. And here's the deal that many of this is I'm gonna put. Many of us are called to do what God wants us to do to be able to minister to the babies. But he's got to get us past our baby stage first. Just think about that. Amen. I'll tell you what's exciting, serving one. JC. Okay, so uh, you know we, so I always invite everybody to come uh, and come in early and pray uh, next door. And we're getting some people to come and pray at 5:30, but we still need more people. To pray, okay, we are a praying church. We're always going to be praying for people. And I, I, I tell you this every single time. I tell you this: if you don't believe in prayer, it's because you're not doing it. If you get down on your knees and you really pray, you will hear from God. Okay, it's not always what you want; it's God's will. Right? And a lot of times, and, and, and I'm telling you, a lot of times we don't get our prayers answered the way we want to, but God knows exactly how and what and when to get to answer our prayers. Amen? Amen. So let's continue to pray. Um, I just want, I want everybody to say hi to my mother-in-law, Dawn Griffin. She's here from Las Vegas. <laughs> we do have a special prayer request. You know, last night, uh, my wife went to go pick her up at the airport, and as she's getting off the plane and on their drive home, she almost got back on the plane. She almost left back on the plane and uh, was it ready? Went went back to ready, California, because uh, her best friend's son. Uh, we just found out last night that he got stabbed nine times. He was stabbed about nine times in in his uh, in his body, and he's really fighting right now. Okay, so we need to keep him in prayer. His name is Blake. Uh, he's fighting. Uh, his liver is um, is in need. And also we're worried about, they're worried about sepsis, you know, and infections and things like that. So he's really fighting. And we believe in the name of Jesus that he will come out of this. We really believe in another miracle. Because God is not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Amen? So we're going to uh, bring Blake up. He's up there right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Mr. Lee, for putting them up there. Uh, is there anybody that you wanted to talk about, Miss Lane? Okay, so the other thing I want to ask you right now is, uh, does anybody in here have needs? Okay, we have needs. We are needy people, right, Miss Linda? We are a needy people ever since the beginning of time. So here's the deal. Listen, I'm going to pray for your needs. I'm going to pray for needs. Your unspoken needs, those things you don't want to talk about. We're also going to pray for the people up here in this prayer list. Listen, I gave you, everybody should have a bulletin. In your bulletin are these prayer needs. 
Okay? Take five minutes, take ten minutes, take fifteen minutes to pray for these people in our list. Okay? And also just continue to seek God. I'm telling you, there is no bigger peace that you will have if you if you just, you know, if you pray and you ask God for peace, He's gonna give it to you. Amen? Okay, so I'm gonna pray for the prayer list. I'm also praying for needs. And right at the end, when I finish praying, I want you to agree with me. And how are you going to agree with me? You're going to say it loud. Amen. Okay? All right. So let's get to prayer. Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. you got all things working together for us, Lord. So we love you. And Father, I pray for all these people up here that need healing, Father God. They're dealing with cancer, Lord God. Every single person on that list, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, for those who have special needs. We Lift up Blake today, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we know the miracles you can do just like you did. And my brother just came up here right now with his with his stomach problem, Father God. We know you can heal, Lord God. So we ask for mercy and peace, Father God, for the family, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that the sliver would be would be just healed, Father God. And all his needs would be met, Lord. Yes, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus for every special need, Father God. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. For Dr. Faiz Raman in India, Pastor Ramon and Miss Teresa yes. in Nogales, and also for Pastor Jesse in yes. Nicaragua, Father God, and everything he's doing yes. in South America. Yes. Pray for all those, Father God, that are dealing with hunger, Lord, that are hungry, that have nothing to eat. I pray for them, Lord God. Yes. Fill their stomachs up today, yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus. For those dealing with rare diseases and like cleft lips and, 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 and all these different things that we don't see here in the States, Father God, I pray for them, Father God. Help them, Lord God, Jesus. And I pray for every person in here, in the name of Jesus, that has special needs, that have, that have, that is calling out to you, Father God, that is calling out to you right now, I pray for them, that they would lose that anxiety, that they, that they would lose those, those worries, Father God, we leave them in your hands, we leave them to you, Father God, because we know that you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and you have all yes. things working together for every single person here, I pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody say, Amen. Amen. Peace. So that's the peace of God right there. That is the peace of God. I'm telling you, God is so good. This week was such a chaotic week for us because we had to move. And those of you guys that moved, you know, you moved recently, you know how it is. Right. Thank you for the guys that helped me moving. Uh, but we're done with that. But I'm telling you, as soon as I got here today, as soon as I got here today, I went to prayer. It's like God said, I got you. I got you. I got you in my arms. It feels so good to be here. Right? And it's so peaceful to know that God's got us in His hands. Amen? Amen. Okay. Alright, so we got some special announcements today. So the first announcement is Mighty Men of Valor tomorrow. Alright? Back on track. So let me get someone up here to talk about Mighty Men of Valor and tell us who's going to be there today. Or, I'm sorry, tomorrow. Alright, how, how many men we got in here? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Mighty Men of Valor is for you. And we're going to do it on uh, second and fourth Monday. And we want all of the men in here to get together. We want to all come together and take the land for Jesus. And we have special speakers that are going to come and bless you. It's all, it's all about getting together, being a blessing to each other, and by helping each other to do God's will. Amen. That's what it's all about. So when you, you come to Mighty Men of God, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be a part of us. You're going to get food, free food, spiritual food, and physical food. You're going to be equipped. You're going to be stronger. You're going to be better. You're going to be a mighty man. Anybody want to be a mighty man or just a little sissy? We're going to take little sissy men. We're going to make a mighty man of valor. Amen? Let's so come next Monday. We've got Joe Ruby. He's going to be speaking. And uh, he's a mighty man of valor. Amen? Amen. And I spoke last week too. Thank you, Pastor Rosenton. God bless you. Okay, and if you're watching us from home, you're welcome to come in tomorrow at 6 p.m. right over next door, okay? All right, thank you. Uh, next week, we'll have Bishop Moody coming in to preach, so make sure you guys make it in next week. Um, we're going to have a we're gonna have a good time next week with Bishop Moody, okay? All right, so here's the, here's the other thing I want to, uh, to all bring up. We're going to do a double-double today. So, we have a graduate, okay?
was with us at the Dream Center, and I, he graduated with us at the Dream Center before, and then he went to work with Pastor Ramon for a little while. And then, you know, he, he was gone for a little bit, but he came back this time, and you know how it's pretty difficult to go through it another time, right? Because you have all this, all this, well, I... Been, I've been there before, I've done this before, I don't have to do this, don't have to do that. So he humbled himself, he went through another six months, and he graduated. But not only did he graduate, he graduated with honor. And I really believe that this is the core of discipleship here. He was really doing true discipleship. Yes. He, he wasn't, you know, in his own little parking and had his, had his own little microwave and all that good stuff, right? He's 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 in the trenches, right? And he's a go-getter. He graduated with honors, so I wanna Pastor Walt, do you wanna give him this? Because I believe he wants you to give him this. He wants you to present him with this with honors. Now what are you gonna do? You go on the second page? Yes. See he, he, he you know what, you see, here's the difference between sitting here in church and, and learning about God and getting out and doing it. These guys in the disciple show, man, they're out there doing it. The way they're living, it ain't the way most people are living. But this is God, so these guys are living. This man, every time I walk on our race, take track, scraps all the track, all the tracks. Oh, we were out together in, in Mill Avenue the other night. I don't know how many tracks he passed out. I'm sitting down the street corner, and Jesus loves everybody, and he's smiling in their face. So God bless you. For me, it's a great honor. To do this once more, Porque se me, se me abren las puertas. because now these doors are open, y las oportunidades que Dios me da, and the opportunities that God is giving him, me, me da, me da los honores de, de conseguir lo que él me ha prometido si yo me enfoco en él. And he's happy that he feels honored that God's going to give him yeah. the opportunity to do the things he wants to do. Yeah. 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 He says, he's not perfect, but he's fighting to be better. And his, his dream is to share with new generations and to share with other people just like yes. that. Yes. He wants to share how big and beneficial this life is with God. So we all know Pastor All the pastors and the leaders of the church. He says he's, he's trying to say something that's going to happen in the future. Church on Street is growing. Yeah. give it to somebody and I want to give it to I've never met this man and I don't really know his story or anything but for some reason God just showed me and told me give it to this man Mr. Cantu Mr. Cantu can you come up here please uh, I've never met him and I don't know his story but for some reason I don't know why God just like, put it in my heart to give you this, this Bible brother God bless you thank you for being here buddy okay good job okay alright so Let's have our uh, praise and worship team come up here, please. We're gonna, we're gonna 
be obedient right now. Okay, we're gonna trust God with our finances, right? It is a good time now to get back to church on the street. Listen, we are growing. We are doing more and more outreaches. Uh, we now have. Are we doing the lunch now, Pastor Wolf? For the breakfast? For the, we are doing a breakfast. Now we're doing the lunch. Okay, at the, at the soup kitchen over on Osborne. So we're just doing more and more things, and we don't get to do this unless. Right? The finances come in. And how do the finances come in? When we become obedient. When we become obedient to God, then God uses those finances to, to help other people and to help us to grow. Amen? So let's not be afraid to give today. Father God, I praise you and I thank you, Lord God Jesus, for everything you're doing with Church on the Street, for everything you're doing with every single person in here, Lord God. Ask you in the name of Jesus, Father God, to just multiply this type today, Lord God. Show us how to, where and how, and just... To use it rightfully, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the giver. And I pray for those that can't give today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, as I'm looking up here at all these men, our praise and worship is amazing. Isn't that awesome? And all these guys up here, they've been in jail and prison except for that pretty little thing over there. Right? But she... She's been in jail, right? Thirty, you've been in jail too. But look at what God does with all these people. Right? Catching all these macho kind of guys, praising the Lord. That's church on the street. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And all thanks to a man who decided many, many years ago that his calling, he was going to chase his calling, and he wasn't going to turn back. Okay? We just finished the book of Joshua not long ago, and right at the end of the book of Joshua, right, Caleb, you know, is saying. He's 85 years old, and Caleb's telling Moses, or I'm telling, telling Joshua, Joshua, let me go up and take my land, right? I'm 85 years old, but I feel like I'm 40 years old. I can go and take my land, this older man, right? Yeah. And Pastor Wall is doing the same thing. Amen? Yeah. He's got that spirit of Caleb. Right? And then yesterday, uh, I just went on our webpage, our you know, Facebook thing, and I think you guys had a wedding here, right? Oh, yeah. They had a wedding here. They did so many uh, over at the Dream Center. And the night before, they were at Mill Abbey. And I'm like, man, Pastor Watt just keeps going and going and going. He's, he's got better than Duracell batteries. He's got God's batteries. Amen? He's got the, right? So this man just keeps going and going and going. And I'm just proud to say today that I've been under his wings now uh, as of last week for nine years. And they've been, they, they went so fast like nothing because he's shown me so much. And because, you know, it, it says in the, it, when you love to do something, time goes by so fast. And I love to be under Pastor Wall and I love to see what he does. And I can't wait to see what God does, you know, as we continue with Church on the Street. So today he's going to preach for us. So Pastor Wall, come on up here. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Ready? It ain't what you think. Amen. Okay, I want everybody to look at uh, John 4.39. John 49. Everybody got it? Heavenly Father, we just pray. Your you're will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of a woman who testified. And he told me, she said, he told me that, I, that all that I ever did. And you know, God put it in my heart to have a woman testify. Beverly, come up here. You talk about somebody that's out in the trenches. Man, she's fighting everything that's coming along. And I was, I just sit back and watch. Pray for her and encourage her. The other day, God said, why don't you get her to come here and share a little bit for a few minutes? And I said, whatever you say, Lord. Praise God. It's an honor for me to be up here. I've been in the church for since 2009. I don't think there was ever a woman to come up and preach, per se. But we won't call it preaching, we'll call it ministering or whatever you want to call it. 
Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, and the Holy Spirit that was in, that is in us, use me, Lord, as a vessel to talk to your good people. Feed them the bread of life. Let them drink mightily and heavily from your <coughs> holy water. It has no end. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 And it's really funny because I came and I looked at the bulletin today, and we're going to be studying Samuel all week. And that's what my text is about. I forgot to give him a piece of paper. Um, it's about. Yeah, the long dress. Be careful. We are going to look at First Samuel. And God will 
prevail. That's right. God will give me the strength to prevail against you, Goliath. Yes. And David wouldn't take Saul's armor. He says, no, it's not going to work. I'm going to go in the name of our Lord. I can't, I have spiritual armor. I've been with the Lord on the backside of the mountain. And I'm going to use the spiritual gift that he's given me. The gift of playing the harp. The angelic harp that angels play. That brings the peace of God. The prayers. And the blessings that God gave him. And his warrior-like attitude. He was a warrior. He had never fought a war. But he fought a bear and a lion. And snatched the lamb out of the bear and the lion's mouth. <coughs> So he prevailed. He bought Saul the, the head. And Saul's son, who was next in line to be king, Jonathan, a beautiful man of God, a warrior in his own right, he fought against the Philistines. One day when they were besieged by the Philistines, a couple of chapters back, Jonathan said, God can save by many and God can save by one mm -hmm. or a few. And he walked out of the Israel camp with his armor bearer and walked into the Philistines camp. Killed 20 of the Philistines and the Philistines got so confused they thought they were being besieged by the whole army. They started killing each other. And the Hebrews jumped up and had a great victory that day. Jonathan had to be the top soldier in the Israeli army. But when he saw what David did, he could have been very jealous because he was next in line to be king. But he didn't, he laid down his jealousy. And not only, was late, not only did he lay down his jealousy, but he wanted a covenant with this man. This young boy, 15 or 20 years old, I want a covenant with him because he saw that David had something from God. He had spiritual eyes, ladies and gentlemen. And he laid down, not only did he lay down, excuse me, not only did he lay down and make a covenant, he gave him his tunic. This was a very special tunic. He was the prince. He was next in line. It would have been a very ornate tunic. tunic. He put it at the feet of David. He put his armor at the feet of David. That means he had no protection. But he was letting David know, I know that you're going to be the next king. I know that even though from a genealogy and a genetic perspective, I'm supposed to be next in line, but I know that God has already put you next in line because he saw what David did. Covenant. Jonathan made a covenant with David, a covenant that would last through their entire lifetimes and even into other generations. But there's a greater covenant than that. And that's the title of my my sermon today. The Messianic, the Messianic Covenant, the Bride of Christ, Church on the Street, you and I. And the Messianic Covenant, I'm going to do it in five minutes. <laughs> Which people take a whole class to do it. It was Jesus Christ it was the Father. Before the foundations of the world, the Father said, I am going to give you the people who believe in me. And Jesus said yes. And he loved them from that day forward. As time went by, the people were in a mess, as we are today. Jesus wrapped himself in humanity. You know the story. 
down here. Walked on the earth 33 years. Was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Coming up to Good Friday right now. It's a perfect time to be talking about this. <laughs> Went down to hell and got the keys of hell. and went and walked on the earth for another 50 days. And then he was taken up into heaven. And one of my very, very favorite scriptures is Mark 16, at the very end of Mark 16. And it says that Jesus Christ rose, that the Holy Spirit for Jesus Christ up in the heaven. And he sat at the right hand of the Father. And the disciples went forth and preached the gospel everywhere. And Jesus Christ working with them did signs and wonders. Amen. And I love it because people say that we don't have a living God. But Jesus Christ was sitting on the right hand of the Father. And yet and still, when the disciples went forth, he worked with them, with signs and wonders following. The Philistines. Jesus Christ killed all the Philistines. He killed the biggest Philistine of all. Goliath was a big Philistine, but there was a bigger one. Our sin. He killed it. He paid the price for us with great mercy and great grace. And not only that, but he bought us. We are the bride of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. Bought with a price. Yes. And for us in here, We can't come to church for two hours and the other 166 hours a week think that we're going to have a marriage with the bride of Christ. It takes a lot more than that. Jesus Christ has done everything for us. He says he gives us new mercies every morning. And because he gives us new mercies every morning, what are you and I supposed to be doing? When you have a young marriage and a young relationship, you run to the dollar store and get little roses and little trinkets and everything. <laughs> She's one of my students from how many years ago? Linda, right? How many years ago? Is that all? Oh gosh, I thought you, yeah. I thought it was like seven, eight years ago. But anyhow. We buy trinkets. We give God little things. We need to be thinking of the way God thinks about us. We need to be thinking about Him. Doing little things for Him. In the morning when we wake up, Holy Spirit of the living God, use me today. Use me today. Holy Spirit of the living God, I repent. Amen. I'm things I haven't done. Amen. When I go to bed at night. So these Philistines in our life, ladies and gentlemen, they're still Philistines because we haven't put them down. And, and the Philistines coming to us may not even be our fault. But Jesus Christ has covered them all. He's covered the Goliaths. He's covered all sin. Don't get caught up in it. Realize that we have victory now on this side. Realize that Jesus Christ has done it all. And now that we're the bride of Christ, we have to start running for him. we got to say, what can I do, Lord, for you? You've done everything for me. You give me new mercies every morning. You give me grace upon grace. 
Lord, what can I do for you? And like Pastor Wall said, that tissue box. I had to look at my time. 709. <laughs> that tissue box. As you keep pulling it out, God's going to keep replenishing it. <laughs> and you're going to get stronger and better. But it gets stronger and better, young people. Amen. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what Philistines and what Goliaths have come up in your life. Amen. They are dead. It's back. It's behind you. It's behind you. Run the race. Run this great race that Jesus Christ has put you in. Put your hands in his hands. And run. Church on the street. Oh yeah, church on the street. The kitchen's okay. Chicken Park is okay. Bill Avenue, everything is okay. But before David was able to kill Goliath, he was anointed. He was anointed. And before we can go out and do the outreaches, we have to do the in-reach. We have to be anointed by Almighty God. This is a living God. This is no theory. This is no scientific stuff. This is the living God who has brought you out of the miry muck. Yes. It's the living God. It's the living God who loves us. It's the living God who wants every single person out there to be saved. He has, there's a living God in Ephesians 2 and he made it's Colossians 3 that says he has things for you and I to do. From the foundation of the earth. And what is for me to do is not the same thing it is for you to do. Because you have to get in his face for yourself. He doesn't have any grandchildren. He doesn't have any aunts and uncles. He doesn't have a pastor. Don't come and ask the pastor to pr pray for you. Moses, you have the stick. Use it. Open up that holy word. 712. So, three more things. Two, we're going to come on to 2023. We've been in the Old Testament. I've got to bring it up to 2023. How do we get there? The word of God is a holy map. It will get you as far as you want to go. It will get you all the way to heaven. And in this life, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have to calm down because there are so many Goliaths and Philistines getting in our ear gates and our eye gate. We have to be silent from the TikTok and the Instagram and the cell phone and the television so that we can get into Holy silence before Almighty God, and we can hear his voice. Can't hear his voice. Do you think the people down on Scottsdale, Mill Avenue, and the other one, can hear his voice on Friday night and Saturday night? But when you come into holy silence, you're able to pray. And as you pray, you come into holy prayer. And God is able to answer those prayers. And when you come to that holy prayer, and God answers those prayers, it makes you pray more, you have more faith. And as you have that interaction, and this is Mother Teresa, not mine. Mm -hmm. I love Mother Teresa. You come into a holy faith where you trust God. You tie not the end of your rope and say, Lord, I've been hearing about it, but I'm going to do it. And when the little Philistines get between your ears in the gray matter, you're going to push them out. And you're going to have that faith, that holy faith. And God says, don't let any man think that he can come by me without having faith in me and believing in me. 
he was 11 6 I think um, and as we go into that holy faith we start God is able to download his love mm. his holy love into us and that holy love when it's downloaded into us <coughs> we as a children of God saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, are supposed to take that same love and give it out to all the world. Amen. Give it out to all the world. Because it's infinite. The more you give out, the more he's going to pour in you. And that holy love, and you pouring out that love, is going to give you your ministry. You're going to be a servant. A holy servant for the Lord. And finally, my brothers and my sisters, when we become those servants, God gives us his holy peace that passes all understanding what every single person on the face of the earth wants and needs. And when we come into that, that holy peace, it makes a silence before God. And we start praying, we have faith, we have love, we start serving more, and we have more peace. My brothers and my sisters, I pray God today that it gives you his peace, he gives you his presence, he gives us and me his protection. Now forth, henceforth and forevermore, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You know, Jesus going through Samaria and he ran across a woman and he says, Give me a drink. Mm -hmm. But she was there, so she gave him a drink. And then he, he's trying to tell her, You know, I got more to drink for you than you could ever believe. And he basically he starts preaching the gospel to her like she was preaching to us. Amen. And she says, Wait, who are you all? Who are you? I want what you got. Mm -hmm. And he says, Well, you go get your husband. Bring him here. <coughs> She says, well, I have a husband. He says, I know you've had five husbands. Listen to this. I think you've had five husbands, and the man you're here from now is not your husband. Well, how do you know? You see, he's preaching. He's sharing. And first of all, the Samaritans, the Jews wouldn't talk to him. They were the outcasts or whatever. You see how the Lord is willing to take. And to me, we go to the down and outers. And we preach to them. Are they the outcasts, basically? The homeless people, you see them all over the place and everything else? Amen. But anyway, and so he gets her and she says, I want this. And then she goes back and tells, goes back to Samaria, what we read here. And she's preaching to all these people. She's preaching to them. And she got them to come. Some of them believed then, right then, when she was preaching. Then she got some of the rest of them to come to Jesus. And they said, well, we believe because of him, because of what you told us to tell us to come to him. So when God put that in my heart, now, of course, we mean teachers all the time. Mm. And I'm telling you something, you, you, you ain't going to find a better teacher. Amen. And what are we supposed to do? Because the Old Testament, they said, well, you know, your wife don't teach you whatever for, for priests. No. Why did you, well, Jesus was right there, and she's, and she's so far up, he knew where she was going. He put the message in her heart. She went and she preached. Mm. Taught whatever you wanted to say. And, my God, she was repentant. Having five husbands, and the one she had right now was her husband. She shacked up. Come on. But you see how God got a hold of her, changed her. Come on. So sent her to preach. Now you say, well, she should have been able to preach. Okay, tell Jesus that. Now, here. Now, a, lot of, a lot of you guys still misunderstand and all this. Why 
Why don't we just let God be God? Amen. 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 And this is what he put in my heart. I'm do what he wants me to do. And that was one of the things he put in my heart the other day. By the way, you don't know what we're doing down at the soup kitchen. I mean, we're bringing in people every day. And then they're bringing in other people from different kids from different uh, churches and everything, you know. And they're seeing us. We got, we're working with the Dream Center. They're coming in here now. But we get them up there giving testimonies. We get them. To let them preach. And there's other pre pre preachers that come. We do this five days a week. Now we're going out in the afternoons with a lot of the Dream Center. We're picking up all people off the street and we're bringing them. Man, it's, it's so neat. And I can just see just growing and growing and growing. And it's, in fact, we've got Louise and I in 1979 or 1980 went to the big church and went to a Sunday school class called Maranatha. And we've actually been in that class all these years, although we didn't go all the time. And Lee Lee was going for once a month, taking all the people, our disciples, and people up there giving testimonies. And so anyway, I, I was talking to leader Doug Prumholm the other day, and I said, why don't you guys come down and see what this, the soup kitchen is all about? So they're coming down Thursday. Now here's the deal. I'm thinking, you know, the guy that has got to do the woman is shacked up. What can he do? Now, don't misunderstand you, old pastor. What can he do with a bunch of older people that have been Christians most of their life? They love Jesus with all their heart. And if they had a vision to pray, maybe some of them wouldn't want to come down and feed some of these older people. Can you imagine what would happen if they had a vision to pray for us? And maybe once a month or so, we take somebody up there and we need them. They give a little testimony. We got all these people. These people know how to pray. And she don't think that what can they do anymore? And the funny, the, the exciting thing is, Doug Prudhomme is preaching on Acts. Yeah. The older people. Man, you got that. We and she loves that real quick. What do you think about that class? She loves that class. He's going to first time to You know, it's so neat. So what are we saying? Simply let God be God. Amen. I gotta go quick because I got I can get my my two cents in too, okay? Okay. I want to talk about God. what he wants us to do as his children. And if you look at Matthew 22, 37. I'm just gonna go fast and see what happens. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. This is truly, truly what it's really, really all about. Amen. Love God and love your neighbor Amen. as yourself. Amen. Amen. And in John 13, 34, it says, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one, love one another. By this, you will know that they, they will know that you are my disciples. See, the thing is, we need to show other people who we are Amen. by loving Jesus and loving other people, each other. Amen. That's going to show people that we really mean business. We are His disciples. If we do what He says, love him and love other people and as we go out and share this gospel they see us we've had people come up go ahead guy hit me the other day and the, the cops said hey, hey you want to press charge and I said, absolutely not i mean you know what that didn't hurt that bad wasn't that big of a deal <laughs> well the thing is he was playing the piano and they told him not to i slammed the piano top, down on his fingers and he <laughs> on the ground and threw him on the ground and the next thing the next thing i know you know Ernesto was on top of him, and I got close to that fight that was going on, and he swung and he hit me. So, but see, the thing is, then he came to the breakfast. Never said a word, I never said a word. Amen. And I heard from the drink, the grapevine that he, he just had been having a bad day. And if this, this could be the thing that got him saved. Yeah. Got him really... Man, if, if, if you love the Lord thy God with all your heart and neighbor yourself, does that show somebody something? Amen. And I'm not, I don't mean they thought it. But this is, in, is that in your heart? Well, I tell you what. By this, 
you will know that you are my disciples if you love, if you have love one for another. And if other people can see it, see it in us, and we're not like, you know, that guy hit me yet, so I'm in jail. <coughs> I'll press charges. Is that showing love? I've been praying for that rascal. He's a tremendous piano player. He's been, we've been pillar on for a long time. I'm dumb enough to believe it. I'm going to pray it. Have been praying. That'll rise a bit saved to come in here and start playing piano for us. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about all that? Okay. Now, if we love the Lord thy God with all the heart, mind, soul, listen to this one. This is John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. How, how simple is that? Love the Lord thy God with all the heart, mind, and if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen? Amen. And then, of course, he wants us to go share this wonderful good news with other people. It's his well-known marriage, right? Now, when Jesus said, repent, he said, follow me, I'll make a fish of hand. And some of the disciples that were ex good disciples followed him. They gave up everything, they left everything, they followed him. Now, here's what he's telling us to do. If you love me, keep my commandments. And his commandment is, you go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you, and lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 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 This I love. That old rascal back there. Stand up, you old rascal. You knew what I was talking about. I'm on your side. Give the Lord a good praise offering. Yeah. What he's doing. Yeah. I'm just going to... I did this yesterday and saw it in here real quick. It's uh, Matthew 25, 31. When a Son of Man comes in His glory and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit at the throne of of his glory. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from the other. As the sheep he puts on one side, and as the goats on the other. And what, what's he really saying? In 34, then the king said to those on his right hand, Come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in and naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to visit you? Listen to this. Verse 40. And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, as much as you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did this unto me. And see what he's saying. If you love me, keep my commandments. And it's his commandments that we go disciple people. It's his commandment to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And we went pick that old rascal up. On the street, just on Van Buren's over there, and he smelled funny and all the above. Him. <coughs> and we took him to the breakfast, to that breakfast. We, then we took him to, down to the worship house, gave him some clothes, gave him, gave him a bath, and sent him back up, took him back where he was. And about just about every day, we'd run by there, 31st Avenue and, and uh, Van Buren, and pick him up. And the first time I came back, Jesus says, you do it unto the least of them, my brother, you do it unto me. Amen. And I says, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I want to love you, and I want to love disciples. And that's what you commanded me to do. If I keep my commandments, he says, you're going to be there with me. And so this is what I see. And by the way, this is what our, your sister does. See, when God's called us to love him, when you, when, when you love him, he puts a desire in your heart to do his will, and his will does not perish, so we need to go out and deal with these people. That old rascal's got his own place now, he's got his own bathroom, and he's got his own living room, and he, he's got a week. 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 He
From February to one, he's done all the groundwork with him. She's doing the groundwork with a lot of these people out there. She's more than taking her time and effort. I mean, she'll go us. We'll be preaching there. She'll stand up and say, she, you know what? If anybody wants to get off the street today, you will be homeless anymore. I'll find a way to do this. Because, you know, sometimes there's not a whole lot of takers. Yeah. But, she, but God's put it in her heart just to, to get a hold of these people and work with them. What do you think about that? He's called us to do the same thing. If you love me, keep my commandments. How many of us love him? Talks cheap. How many of us love him? Now, anyway, if we love him, he's going to put the desire in our heart to do what he wants. His will, not our will. Yeah. And, you know, just like Jess was there, Jay, she was talking about, what she get to do in the will of God? I don't care how bad it feels, but... Beverly, I mean, she's been, she been, oh, you can't believe the stuff she goes through. But the joy of the Lord is what keeps you. Amen. This is God will keep my commandments. See what I will do. And what is he going to do? Now listen to this. This, I love this. This is James 1.22, New Living Translation. And remember, it is a message to obey, not just listen to if you don't obey it, you're only fooling yourself. For if you just listen and don't obey, it's like looking at your face in a mirror, but doing nothing to approve your appearance. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. How many times, notice we've all, how many times all of a sudden you realize you're getting old, you're getting fat, you're getting something? You, you come to the realization of yourself, this is it. I got to do something. But if you don't go back and look in the mirror, it ain't going to remind you. And you don't want to go back and look in the mirror because it's going to remind you. Come on, I'm going to talking about. But if you take it to heart and say, look, I'm going back and look in the mirror. That's the perfect law of liberty. That's the will of God working in your life. That's his commandment, to be doers. And see, if you don't do it, you're kidding yourself. Amen? Amen. In, in verse 41, Matthew 26 says, <coughs> Then he also will say to those on the left, that's the one I'm paying attention, depart from me, you cursed, unto an everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also answered him, saying, Lord, when did he see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked, sick or in prison, and you did not minister, we did not minister to you? Then he said, he will answer and say, Surely I say to you, as much as you did not do it to me, or one of these, I'm not unto me. And these, he said he, he, would, he, would, he said he would go, they would go away to everlasting punishment. See, we've got to be a doer of the word, not kidding ourselves. Amen. Even we don't understand it. I'm going out picking up an old rascal nobody knows we are. In fact, Terry, our secretary, was one of the first ones we went out and started on the streets. Picking up people. Now we're down there all the time, picking up five days a week, picking up these people. In cabs, I think about 30 people. Just about every day, we've got new group drivers. And, and then we're going out, we've got the Dream Center guys picking up people. The other day, you know, we're driving around the streets. You see all people on the streets now? We're not going down to cats. We're going in the afternoons. We're going driving, you know, on the streets. We got, they got their little van, and I got my little bus, and we're driving around picking up people. And drove by, and just Indian school, just before we get on Grand Avenue, and we just went by these people, and they were all bummed out. Cops have been by here. They're going to throw us in jail. We'll get out of here. And I said, we guys want to go get some lunch? Well, we do, but we don't. What are we... <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I did? I called Mike Tomato, and I said, hey, where are a lot of the homeless people close by here going that the cops aren't bothering? They gave me a couple of dresses. Wasn't too far. So I told them where to go. Something, in, and then yet the other two are running around picking up other people. They won't have a whole lot of time to pick up, you know, just a, something inside me says, they move them. Put them on that old bus and move them. Yeah. Well, they weren't quite, you know how it is. Like our dear sister was saying, anybody get one and get off the street today, we'll take it. See, they're funny. Yeah. 
Just like we're funny. Come on. We look in the mirror, we're funny, aren't we? Because we see what we don't want to see. Oh my God, like wrinkles or whatever the thing is. And then you don't want to pay attention anymore. Well, if the cops are going to, you know, throw them, kick them out, well, they're not going to, they're going to believe it, they're not going to believe it. And if we're going to help them, we're not, you know, come on. How many know what I'm talking about? Amen. But God says, you love your neighbor as yourself. And that, in fact, I says, okay, I'll come back later after we did all that. And, and by the way, oh my God. There was a young lady, her name was Ashley. She just got out of jail. In fact, I think I visited her in jail. And she got out, she, she came, and she said, my mom's in prison. Will you go visit her? Sure. I went out and visited her mother, and her name was Deborah. Mm -hmm. So I told her about church on the street, you know, so she paroled the church on the street. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, we had a pastor. His name was Robert Romero. And they got to winking each other, did it right, just like Jerry and uh, JC did. They ended up getting married. And he, he was an old guitar player, singer, and everything else. Come to find out, she had a lot of busy talent. She never played the piano. Next thing you know, she's playing the piano and they're working together. Deborah and Robert Romero. And man, they were with us for a long, long time. In fact, there was a time we were going down to Cass in the morning, feeding 100 people, 150 people every day, five days a week for a long, long time. <coughs> you remember when we did that? Well, anyway, well, she finally passed away. And when we were picking up people the other day, we brought them to the breakfast. It was her son. Michael. Michael. And man, I'm telling you, Lord, see what I'm trying to say? We just be willing and obedient. If you let me keep my commandments, just see what God is going to do. Now, you heard, you heard a message from our sister Beverly. Now, God's speaking to you. He's speaking to me. Are we going to look in the mirror and forget? In other words, we listen to the Word of God. You're here in church. Oh, I'm going to turn something good now. If God's you is out there to witness to somebody, I'll tell you what. We got some tracks here. I want everybody to take track before you leave and give it to somebody. Now, I want you to think about this. There's many, 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 many people get saved but just by reading one of these tracks. Now, are we going to be that self-centered? No. What do you want to say? Lay whatever and just not give anybody a track and all it's going to take possibly is you giving somebody a track. And uh, we give these, in fact, I'm going to buy some more. We gotta get Joe, we gotta get some more money. We can give out thousands of these things. And we're about now, every bad place we go, we get the dinner. That's all we get, that's all we people took them out. You know, we're taking them out here. Every hour we should go, we're passing them out. Chicken Park, we took a bunch of them and passed them out today. I'm telling you. Now this is see, this is one of the ways that you can evangelize the need. Uh, doing what the will of God wants, and I'm, I'm reading testimonies now about many of these people that pass out tracks, chick tracks, that they're writing chick and telling them because of their tracks, these people called them back to the ones they passed out to and said they got saved. Amen. So what are we going to do? Are we going to be doers of the word or are we going to be hearers of the Are we going to lie to ourselves? Why don't you just look in the mirror and say, hey, I can't quit lying to myself. Do I have to go to um, put some of that stuff on my face? What do you call it? <laughs> Whatever it does, take the, rid the wrinkles away. Or am I going to be honest with myself? That's the way it is, and I'm not going to talk out about it. I'm, I am what I am. That's, that's the thing. That's what the Bible is talking about. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. And it's not a man telling you, demanding you to do it. It's saying, be a doer of the word, not hearers only. Yeah. Think about what it's saying. If you love me, keep my commandments. And if you do that, I can to manifest myself to you. I'm going to use you. You're going to be so content and fulfilled. In fact, it gets so strong in you. I'll tell you what. I never, 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 never thought that I love God any more than I love sin. Mm -hmm. When I was a sinner, I said, man, you want to become a Christian. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the devil driving me and that's a drug. Does anybody understand what I'm talking about? I can tell you today. It drives me 
It overpowers me more than drugs ever did. It overpowers me. The love of God overpowers me. I, you can say it any way you want. I keep pulling out those cleaners, man. I keep getting fired up. And the more I pull out, the more I want to pull out. And just sit back and watch people grow. Oh, Remington, that old rascal is about as they come. But he gave a testimony that really, really touched me and turned me on. How God has raised him up. He's got a family. He's rooted and grounded. He's got a job now. Amen. Amen. And I believe that's what every one of us need to do. Is simply let God be God. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I'm just willing to listen to him. Listen to his word. Look in the mirror. Not deceive yourself. Don't turn around, turn around and walk away. Amen? Amen. And so many they did. But if you keep looking steadily in God's perfect law, that law sets you free. And if you want to say, and if you do what it says, don't forget what you heard. Then God will bless you for doing it. Amen. That's James 1.26. It's all the same thing. How many of you willing to do the will of God? Is God dealing with you? Okay, talk to you. How many, how many want to look in the mirror? Another, let the, the Lord, let the word of God work in you. How many want to do that? You mean business. Even though you're, you don't want to see what you, you really don't want to see what it's like or what you look like, but you, you know you need to. How many will do that? Stand up. You're willing to make a commitment to God to do what He wants you to do. If you don't, stay seated. Go get up if you don't need it. He knows you. Lord, six. You should just say it in your heart, okay, God, I'll do what you want me to do. He ain't going to give you more than you can have. Or more than you want to stand up. I know you're right now. I love you. I just, by the way, I'm a street preacher, so I like to, you know, I was preaching the street. I look at, hey. I said, hey, how many of you think listen to you God's will? And some people said, I said, sir, God's dealing with you, sir. Point at him. Yeah, he's dealing with you. A lot of them, they put a finger up too, but that's okay. A lot of them stand up. We need to hear the word of God. And by the way, we need to deal with the word of God. And this is what we're saying, I'm saying right now. He's dealing with you. Is that why you're standing up and you're willing to do what he wants? Not what I want, what he wants. Amen. Amen. Right. Joe, come up here. What's your prayer for us? <laughs> Lead us in prayer. Joe has worked with our disciples now. Amen. I understand, I understand he's an old coot. <laughs> but he loves Jesus. That's the truth. Pray for us and pray for Father, we come before you, Lord, and uh, we heard the word today, Lord. We heard what your instructions were, Lord. And Lord, we need to we need to serve. We need to take it seriously. We need to go out there and love, like the pastor was talking about. We got to love each other. Love each other three things, Lord. We got to grow with each other. Most of all, we just got to care about each other because we care about you. So, Lord, as we made a commitment tonight to uh, to serve you. I pray, Lord, that each and every one that stood up will do exactly that. Uh, to the very best of their abilities, get out there and serve you. Get out there and feed the homeless. Get out there and give out tracts. Uh, Lord, I've given out tracts is something I haven't done a lot of. But Lord, teach me to do that. Teach me to do that. Teach, teach us how to do that, Lord. And if there's anybody in here that is, uh, doesn't know Jesus Christ, I'd ask you to, to come up front right now. And uh, I'll say a prayer for you. Uh, because it's a, it's a one-time opportunity. You get an opportunity to come up here to change your life, to, to become a, a, a new creature. Uh, I just pray that uh, the Lord would send people up here. I'm going to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I've fallen short on many occasions. I've fallen short on many occasions. The Lord, uh, I want to change tonight. The Lord, I want to change tonight. I want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ the rest of my life. I want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. Because he, because he died on the cross for me, and, and he did it so that I get my sin taken away. He died on the cross for me, so he could have my sin taken away from me. 
And I promise tonight that I will serve for the rest of my days. And I promise I will serve him for the rest of my days. And I promise, Lord, tonight I will never deny him because he said if I deny him, he'll deny me. I promise that I will never deny the Lord nor he'll deny me. So, Lord, thank you for taking me into your kingdom. Lord, I thank you for taking me into your kingdom. I'm a new man. I'm not that old man anymore. I'm a new man. I'm not that old man anymore. And I pray this in the highest name. Pray this in the highest name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.